And now for something completely different. In this video, I'm going to be talking about LG smartphones and more specifically, LG's recent decision to leave the smartphone market entirely. Now, to those who may have somehow stumbled onto this channel by way of this video, this is not by any means my usual forte. I wouldn't even consider myself particularly knowledgeable on smartphones, and what I normally reserve this channel for is discussing the history of consumer 3D graphics. Feel free to browse the myriad of videos in my back catalog for more on that, if you're interested. For those loyal viewers who are regulars to this channel and are currently thinking, what's he doing talking about LG smartphones? What the hell does that even have to do with this channel? Uh, well, the short answer to that is everything. This is Pixel Pipes. All right, so here's the deal. The video you are watching right now is being filmed with an LG V40 Thin Q. In fact, every video on this channel has been filmed with an LG phone of some sort. The makeshift teleprompter I'm using is my old LG G5, currently clinging for dear life on the neck of my tripod. The audio you're hearing is coming from my lav mic, which is plugged into, yep, an LG phone. In fact, my very first one, a G2. Hell, my lighting is really two old LG phones with a flashlight on. All right, that last one was a lie. But everything else is absolutely true. The fact is there wouldn't even be a Pixel Pipes channel if not for LG phones, as odd as that sounds. Not only have I been using them to literally create all the content you've been watching, I've also been somewhat of a diehard fan of LG smartphones ever since getting my first one in 2014. And am I really going to sit here and get all nostalgic over a brand I've only been using since 2014? Hell yeah, I am. I mean, that was only... Oh god, has it really been seven years? Actually, it goes back even further than that. Remember feature phones? <laughs> Remember the LG NV series? Yeah, I had one of those too. And also the totally not a smartphone, but sort of kind of trying to be NV Touch. So yeah, counting those, it's really been more like 13 years. But with LG's announcement on the 5th of April this year that they will be shuttering their smartphone division, a long line of succession through the course of my history with their handsets comes to an abrupt end. Now, to be fair, I've never seen them as a top contender in the market. They were always a distant second or heck, even third place player next to Samsung or Google's own phones. And for that matter, even under HTC when they were in their heyday. Yet they were always interesting in some way or another, never on the level of the polished execution of their bigger rivals, but always innovating, aggressively, maybe too aggressively at times. LG had bendable phones, modular phones, multi-screen phones, and when Samsung made a huge deal about their Galaxy S10 having three rear cameras, I had to chuckle a little as my LG V40 gave me the same feature four months earlier. But more often than not, when LG innovated, it was met with a collective meh by the general public. They were seen as gimmicks, acts of desperation by a struggling smartphone competitor trying to grab some much needed attention. Sometimes uh, that was a fair assessment, sometimes it wasn't. Curved, bendable phones clearly weren't the future, but wide-angled lenses sure were. LG's G5 introduced that in 2016, and many of the bigger players would follow suit later on. The G5's modularity, however, would not catch on. In theory, being able to remove the lower chin portion of the phone would let you attach gadgets and upgrades, but many of those upgrades were extremely limited in distribution or usefulness. In the end, most people only made use of the ability to quickly swap internal batteries, and LG was happy to offer you one as a spare with every G5 purchase. Of course, with a mediocre battery life, that swappable feature became a necessary hassle rather than a bonus. And as build quality suffered as a result of its modularity, the G5 ended up being one of LG's worst regarded models. And as an owner of one, I can definitely attest to the fact that it wasn't their best showing. 
A similar reception was given to the G4 in that it sported gimmicky features like a curved screen and leather backing, and what positive strengths it had were marred by spotty execution, technical faults, and some serious quality control issues. And sadly, this was much of LG's legacy. Amongst fierce competition, they tried to differentiate themselves and often stumbled, in an industry that's unforgiving of any single misstep. While Samsung's mobile division pulled in 4.15 trillion won, or over $3.6 billion in profit in just the first quarter of 2021 alone, LG's mobile division hasn't made any profit in the past five years, losing around $4.5 billion over that span of time, according to The Verge. While they had hoped 2021 would be a turning point, unfortunately due to various circumstances not just related to their lack of competitive products, that never materialized. And that, it seems, was the make or break point. Against that harsh reality, it's really no wonder they're closing up shop. I can't really say I'm surprised, but I am a little sad. As quirky as they often were, it was that innovation that often drew me to them. They weren't making smartphones the same as everyone else. When you bought an LG phone, you weren't buying a clone of a better known brand. It was distinctively an LG phone, for better or for worse. And when those innovations did catch on, they were brilliant. If you double tap your phone screen to wake it up, you might have LG to thank for that. That was introduced on the G2 in 2013 as the knock-on feature. Sadly for many though, those innovations didn't matter until they were adopted by other companies on better phones. And that would eventually prove to be the death knell for their products as we've now seen. Being there first didn't matter if they couldn't get the basics down 1000%. Samsung and Google could do that almost every time, leading to the brand loyalty they see today. That isn't to say there weren't highlights though. The times that LG did execute well, they were some of the best smartphones you could buy. My G2 is still one of my favorite phones I've ever owned, and besides spending its retirement years recording audio for me, it also doubles as a smart remote in the living room thanks to LG's inclusion of an IR port. Why did those ever go away again? And my V40 is without a doubt the best smartphone I've owned to date. The two do have one thing in common though, neither tried to reinvent the wheel too much, instead focusing on producing a solid product with a few nifty extras. Had LG given every product that focus, their smartphone division might have survived into 2022 and beyond. Unfortunately, LG's departure also means a huge drop in competition in the Android market, and that's another reason why it's so significant. Yes, ultimately, Android makers have to compete against the Apple juggernaut, but for users already well entrenched in Google's smartphone ecosystem, the choices will be much fewer, and that abundance of daring ideas will dwindle with it. Even as an LG fan, there have been many times I've questioned the logic of going with a less tried and true option over the better known ones. I'd look at what everyone else was buying, but something in my gut kept pulling me towards them. I guess it's just a tendency of mine to root for the underdog. Whether it was always the smartest choice for a smartphone or not, it was always interesting, always different. And for the many memories, milestones, and unique experiences I've had on an LG device, I'll always be grateful. Thanks for watching. I'm Nathan, and this has been Pixel Pipes.